Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here, welcome back to another Brown Dust video. Alright, so today we're going to talk about the 4 stars, which are the best units you should go for, uh, the particularly one that you should have and you need to have versus those that are like more niche compared to the standard ones, like they are particularly good in certain area of the game, like world boss or things like that, but not really good elsewhere. So I'm going to try and cover as many as I can. Uh, not too in-depth though, or else the video will be like 4 hours long. You don't want that to happen. Alright, so let's jump right into it. Okay, so we're going to go by class. From warriors to defenders to magicians to supporters. Let's go. First up on the list, we have Octavia. Alright, so Octavia is definitely a useful one to have. She has charm. Not many 4-star mercenaries has charm. Uh, she's not like a mercenary that is recommended to be awakened because most of the scenarios where you actually need her, especially in campaign, you can just use her unawakened at plus zero. You don't even need skill ups on her. Uh, she will get this particular skill off, the attack interference charm for 16 turns. Obviously, if you do rank her up, the charm will last longer, up to 24 turns. Uh, but it's not really needed. So in most cases, if you do have her, just keep her. Do not do anything to her. Uh, occasional campaign stages where the enemies aren't immune to charm, you will find her useful. In PvP though, uh, not really recommended because of her formation. She hits the very front and it's kind of easy to set up against her. Alright, so next up we have Dekka. So Dekka is a unique one. Uh, this one does hit skip Tal. He's alright, not too good, not too bad either. There's really not much use of for him because in PvP uh, there are a lot of better units so I'm not sure what to think of him. He's kind of in an odd place right now. There are some teams that try to try to use him and he can work definitely with buffs from supporters if you like double or triple buff him but otherwise I wouldn't recommend using him. Alright, so next up we have Rydal. So Rydal, if you plus 9 her, you get this incredible range. And the reason why you need this range is because you can position her everywhere on the map. You can position her top or at the bottom. Without this particular range, if you have her at plus 8 for example, she will be forced to place in the middle row for you to hit at least 3 opponents. So Rydal is outclassed by Vyla. Vyla is in every single way better because she can deal decomposition damage which is why she is in an odd place right now. I wouldn't recommend investing in her. I used to think that she could combo well with Velona and Cordelia, but even the bonus from, from this 25% attack is not worth it. Uh, Viola is just way better. Alright, so the reason why Viola is so good because of this decomposition. So if you have her at plus 9, it increases all the way to times 5% of the max HP. So this particular skill right here, it depends on the opponent's max HP. So the higher the HP is, this is going to be going to deal more damage. Wyla is one of the best warrior you can get right now for 4 stars. Buff prohibition very useful as well. This will prevent opponents from receiving buffs. Silence also very useful to have. And since she hits all the way at the back, usually she will be able to silence at least one or two supporters, which is very good. Highly recommended uh, to try and build one. Alright, Dominic is a unique mercenary which is exclusive to the mileage. She's not worth going for, uh, you'll just be wasting your mileage points for her. Uh, she doesn't provide much except for concentrated fire. Whatever that she can do, Maya can do equally as much. Orion. So Orion is good for the world boss and that's about it because she has one of the one of the highest if not the highest uh, incoming damage boost. Incoming damage plus 100%. So that is quite a lot of incoming damage. So that means that uh, if you start off with her, the next opponent that hits the enemy boss will have the damage increase. But in PvP, they are much better units to use compared to her. Alright, so Xenon is very good for beginners. If you have like a Xenon right now, probably if you are in like Bronze or Silver League, you would have at least encountered one of these guys. He has the permanent Masochism, which basically instantly heals him whenever he gets attacked. And he's like so, sort of like a mini Ser. And then when he hits the opponent, basically he's able to absorb amount of their HP based on his attack. But he falls off later on when you try to climb the arena because he only hits one tile. And since you're limited to only 
3 4 star mercenaries in Novice Arena. He falls off easily. There are so much better units right now. He's not bad, definitely usable. Uh, especially if you are still starting the game, I would highly recommend to awaken and build one. Alright, Maya is not that strong. She has this unique concentrated fire and a skip tile range. So most people, they try to chase around the strat. Some people you might see using Maya with Octavia combo. Basically, she will skip the tile in front, the defender in front, and then Octavia will just jump in and suicide bomb. So you will see combos like that. Maya, Octavia, Maya and Wiggle, similar things like that. But otherwise, she's not that useful except for in World Boss Ogdot, where you can stack up the Concentrated Fire to try and deal as much damage with Ventana or Blaze. Alright, so next up we have Lito. Lito is definitely one of the best 4-star warrior you can have right now. Uh, in terms of the arena, the higher end leak, a lot of people use him because he's one of the few units that can ignore Taunt and he deals insane damage and has the ability to stun. So this ultimate strike deals incredible damage, especially when he's buff. He has this permanent swiftness which increases attack based on the amount of edgy he has and obviously advanced stun and boost incoming damage. So very cool. Uh, in Novice Arena, he's sort of outclassed by Yunrung because Yunrung has the ability to hit two tiles as opposed to Lito which is only able to hit one tile. They both hit the far rare at the end of the opponent's range. Uh, in the regular arena, you can see Lito being more useful because lots of people with taunt like Ser, Aaron, Diomaron, and yeah, it's just annoying. But in Novice Arena, most people would still stick to Yun Rang still. Alright, so next up we have Zakan. So Zakan is one of the few units that's very unique to counter certain units. So Suicide Bomber, basically he deals fixed damage to the opponent, so he cannot receive buffs, which is unfortunate. But if you give him two assault runes, he's usually strong enough to take down a Sigmund or a Foxy or any of the squishy heroes. So most Sigmund will try to counter Zakans by equipping vital runes, so that's the current meta right now. Usually Sigmund will go for two defense runes. Since this guy deals fixed additional damage, defense runes will not work on on Zakan, so Mo Sigmund tries to like overcome that by equipping one defense and one vital rune. But even then, Zakan is still a problem, especially in defense teams, where people will try to set up against your warriors. In Novice Arena, he's not that useful because it's such a waste if you want to use a Suicide Bomber as one of your 4 stars since you're only limited to 3. Not recommended in Novice Arena, but in Arena, definitely, he's one of the better units to use defensively. Ouch! Ouch is one of the few units that can counter Hell. Alright, so if you want to counter Hell specifically, go for her. She does have pretty good range uh, in terms of the attacking range, but she only hits the very front, which is unfortunate. I personally prefer Corette. So yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Ouch definitely is still strong. It's just that I think Corette is better with how the meta is going right now. Varian, she's not that strong, she has extremely low attack, even though she is able to copy buffs, but usually she dies, no matter what. Especially if she hits opponent's taunt, basically she will copy the opponent's taunt, and she will receive the taunt, and opponent hits her and she dies. That's what happens most of the time, so she's not that strong and it's quite hard to use in arena, but maybe in PvE you could see some use of her, but most of the time, I think she's skippable. Nia, Nia, useful for world boss Arkstar. That's about it. You won't find much use usage of her. Uh, not recommended to use in the arena, any of the arena or novice arena because of this skill right here. So this skill attacks four times with reduced attack. So that means enemies with permanent masochism will be able to receive the healing as well. Xenon, for example, counters her. Seer counters her. Hell counters her. So. She's countered by a lot of heroes, but fighting against bosses in Evil Castle and the world boss Arkstar, she's very useful. She's able to hit multiple times if you buff her correctly. She will be able to deal insane damage. Only in PvE though. Brisa is a very unique one. She's a tanky warrior, which is able to heal every single turn. She is useful in the world boss Tyrion, um, if you know how to use her and utilize her skills correctly. 
you can either use Brisa or Jacqueline or Martina. Both of, either of them work. Uh, yeah, check out my world boss guide if you guys want to know more. Otherwise, in PvP, I do see some teams trying to use the three musketeers to have the set effect mercenaries set effect. So they are definitely very strong together. But based on the skill, you have to let Brisa go first for Camilla and Martina to receive the regeneration effect. So Camilla, personally, in my opinion, is probably the weakest among the three of the Musketeers combo, but she is definitely usable if you are trying to use the combination of the three Musketeers. All right, so next up, we have Dr. Morgan. Dr. Morgan suffers from the same thing as Nia. He has this reduced attack thing, doesn't work too good, and the time bomb thing is kind of weird and finicky. Uh, it's not something that you should actually utilize in the arena, it's more like a PvE thing. So yeah, if you want to skip him, I guess you could. Kral! Alright, so Kral is a unique one. He has this ability right here, uh, which basically resets the duration of the applied debuff. So basically in the world boss, if you stack debuffs and the duration was about to run out, you can basically reset the debuff duration to increase it back to the original turn. So something of that use, but otherwise I wouldn't recommend using him in the PvP at all. Kellen, good only in world boss. Outside of there, he sucks. Don't use him outside of the world boss. Alright, so now we are down to the last two, Korat and Yunrang. So these two by far, in my opinion, is the best warrior to use in the Novice Arena currently, right now, right now, as of today when I'm making this video. Alright, so Korat has this type of skill range, insane, she's able to skip Tal, which means she will be able to skip most defenders which people tend to place in the very front. Very useful for that. Yunrang has very strong attack, high crit damage, she's able to deal critical bash and has the ability to silence opponents as well. If she hits Hell, she will be able to silence her, so one of the counter, even though she might die. But yeah, she might be outclassed by Leto in the regular arena because Leto can ignore Taunt. But in the Novice arena, Yunrang definitely shines more. Um, she is able to get rid of most Taunters easily in the Novice arena. She only struggles with the 5 star mercenaries where Leto doesn't. Alright, so we pretty much covers most of the 4 star warriors. If you're looking for Arena, like Novice Arena specifically, Koret, Yunrang, um, I think Vyla. Koret, Yunrang, Vyla, and Lito. These are the top 4 picks, in my opinion. Okay, moving on to the Defender. Let's see, who do we have? Alright, Martius, I've already covered him. Um, so go check the recent Martius and Narissa analysis. Uh, he's sort of unique. D despite being a Defender, he's like more offensive. So I wouldn't recommend using him in the arena. So Grace. Grace is a very unique one. She is a must-have for, I would say, everyone. Not because she's useful in arena, she's not. But in Mystic Island and in Guild Wars, she shines because she's able to nullify the taunt and basically just taunt prohibits them if she's hit with a taunt. So very useful for that particular reason. Then Arisa, ho! Oh, we are here with the Queen. Then Arisa is the queen of defenders, period. Period. There's no other defenders that can do what she can do. Look at this. At plus 9. Incoming damage, minus 65%. Alright? So that is insane. The amount of uh, damage that she's able to ignore, like reduce, is just incredible. She's one of the best defenders out there. If you want to have a good solid defender in your team, just build her. Every account should have her. If not, you're doing it wrong. One of the most solid defenders out there. Very useful in Novice Arena, she's useful in Evil Castle, she's useful in PvE, she's useful in even in the regular arena at the top tier like Crystal League. I still see many people using her, like she's actually that good. Gauss, uh, he's pretty bad, I would say skip him. He's good in the world boss, one of the world boss, let me think. Which one was it? Yeah, I think this particular skill right here, since it reflects additional damage to the enemy who attacks, so enemies makes HP times 25% additional damage. So specifically to counter bosses, because if the boss has high max HP, this is going to deal 25% of that damage. Otherwise, he's not that good in the arena. Jacqueline is only good in world boss. He's bad everywhere else, so he's like a must-have for world boss if you want to get high scores. Yuria, I used to use her a lot. Um, she has this stun, which is very useful. 
and nullifier as well and she hits 2 tiles similar to Yunrang at the far rare. She's kind of an odd one, I would say uh, she's not like the best defender because she's more offensive. If you want like a pure tank then Arisa is the one to go for. Uh, she's like a semi-hybrid able to stun the opponent and able to tank a little bit at the same time. I wouldn't recommend building her though if you have Tenerisa. Alright, so BDMN0524, uh, this guy is also unique. He has this weird attack, attack 4 times, I don't know why, a defender needs that and some bleeding damage. He's quite bad actually, one of the, <laughs> probably one of the worst defender. Hopefully he'll get buffed soon. Martina is not the best, but she is very good if you pair her with the other two musketeers combo, the three of them together, which is Camilla and Brisa. So that's something to keep in mind. Britain, all right, so Britain is probably one of the best hybrid defender attackers out there. All right, he's very unique. He has this skill, which basically increases, the higher his defense, it buffs his attack and crit rate as well, based on the amount of defense he has. So the more defense he has, the more attack and crit rate he has, which is insane. Also, he hits like 3 tiles to the front, so if opponents are not careful, he will be able to counter a lot of them. He's very good in countering hell, countering almost anyone who doesn't have debuff immunity, to be able to freeze them for a couple of turns. Very, very strong and solid defender to have. Our loss, mileage specific, skip this guy. Uh, only useful for fusion, otherwise no real reason for you to have him. Joseph, uh, this guy is similar to Kral, like I mentioned earlier. So the ability to reset duration of debuff. Otherwise, uh, different range, he's able to tank a couple of hits, that's about it. Rene, all right, so Rene, uh, a pretty solid defender if you don't have any, but I would still recommend for you to try and recruit the Narissa because the Narissa is way better. Like at the lower tier, maybe Rene can work for you, but once you reach the higher tier in the arena, like Novice Arena I'm talking about specifically, lots of warriors can one-shot Rene, but not the Narissa because the Narissa is able to reduce incoming damage by 65%. Most people try to stack their buffs on supporters, to like triple or quadruple buff their warriors, so Rene won't be able to withstand that, but the Narisa can, so something to keep in mind. Frederica, she is pretty bad actually, she's like, apparently people say that she's the darker version of Rene, uh, she's not that good. She's good in fighting bosses though, so based on enemy's current HP, she's able to deal additional damage, but other than that, nothing special right here. Grossa is kind of unique. Uh, he is actually very strong, alright? For a 4-star defender, he has the highest HP for any 4-star defender, period. Highest HP, like, not even kidding. He he might even have, like, higher HP compared to most of the 5-stars as well. This is the max test. Look at this, 9,225 HP. If I'm not mistaken, he has higher HP than Seir higher HP than Diomaron, like a lot of 5 stars as well. So this guy is not to be underestimated. He has Taunt, he has this thing which actually pairs well with his stats. So basically the more HP he has, the more additional damage he will deal to the opponent. Very cool and strong defender right here. Mora, she used to be very strong and then she got nerfed and then yeah, now she's pretty bad. Like this skill right here needs her HP to drop below certain percentage. Uh, wouldn't recommend using her because of that. And lastly, we have Iris. Iris is kind of unique. She has this ability to uh, apply charm to the enemy that attacks. The problem is this skill will only activate after she attacks. So you have to like sort of arrange her to be the first few to attack. I don't know, it's kind of complicated. So the formation like can be quite wonky if you want to use her correctly. She's definitely pretty strong, but in terms of pure defending tanking power, Denarissa is the one to go for. Like Denarissa is like the 4 star version of Arkhan, just imagine that. Where Arkhan is like the 5 star super tank, Denarissa is like 4 star super tank. There's no one that can beat her in that. Alright, so I pretty much cover the 4 stars already. Denarissa is the one that you should go for. Second for me, I would say Britain, and third, probably Grossa. Alright guys, I think I'll end the video here. I know I still have like the magicians and supporters to cover, but I will most likely cover that in another video. This video is getting a little bit too long. I wouldn't want to make a 1 hour video, it would be hard for me to edit. So as always, 
stay tuned on the channel for the next part i'll call it a part two or something subscribe if you haven't already give this video a like and i will see you guys in the next one have a nice day goodbye